week on Bite Me, I'm going to be talking about cricket. No, not the sport that we actually physically play. And even not video games that you play on your computer or on your smartphone. I'm going to talk to someone who actually worked at NASA and has come up with a brand new cricket game. So what are we waiting for? Let's get this show on the road. Well, like I said, today we're going to be talking about the sport of cricket, but this isn't cricket that you play on your phones, on your tablets, on your television screens with your home consoles, even PCs or even gully cricket. No, this is cricket on a tabletop. The man who invented this was at NASA, if you can believe that, and he brought cricket in a way we've seen it only with what you would associate with, let's say, foosball, but this is very, very different. We have Aditya who's going to take us through everything this cricket game is all about. So. Aditya, tell us everything about the table we have in front of us and all the players we see. Sure, Samir. Thanks for the very nice introduction. So, what you're seeing in front of you is really the world's first tabletop cricket game. And by that I mean one that really emulates the physics of cricket. Um, none of us go to see cricket played where the balls are thrown along the ground or hit along the ground. right? You want the sixers, you want the full tosses, you want the bouncers in cricket. Well, we've created a table game in which you can do all those things. Right? So, one of the things we've done is we've tried to kind of keep the physics of cricket, the speeds and the, the variations in shots to be very realistic on this. And so, um, let's give it a spin. So, I am controlling the batting. I have uh, three degrees of motion all at once so I can hit the ball to the offside or leg side and uh, you as a bowler can change the speed and the pitch of the ball as well as spin it. it. This was an idea that came to me about a decade ago and having grown up in a big family where cricket was very big, it was, you know, why do we have these simple games both for cricket and baseball where the balls get thrown along the ground and what would it take to be able to hit in three dimensions on the field? That's really how it started. I think what makes this game really fun and interesting is the speed and the, the uh, trajectory of the ball the ball is coming from the bowler to the batsman in about in less than half a second. So what we did was the first principle, you know, having played cricket myself, is how do you take a two-handed approach to holding a bat and you condense it down into knobs, which feel very intuitive, right? And so that's what we came up with. So I can hit on the offside, I can hit on the leg side, all in less than half a second, yeah. right? And yeah. it, it does require skill. So when you try it for the first time, the game may seem hard. But the good news about it is as you practice, you get better. There were many iterations of this game before this was what you see here today. And yes, uh, the height of the figures and um, the shape of the figures was all modeled through physical calculations to see roughly how big should we have them. And the good news is that that is something that will keep changing over time. It will keep evolving. So we may have, for example, in the next version, fielders that are in diving positions or something. right? And, and as you know, the fielders, they do two things. They will catch the ball when you hit a locked it shot, they're designed so they will retain the ball, but they also slow the ball down from getting to the boundary, which results in fewer runs mm -hmm. because our scoring is timing based. Okay, so since the scoring is timing based and we also can see a tablet out here that's uh, going to give us scores and other information, uh, talk about the technology behind this, the sensors that you've uh, got in place. Along the way, one of the questions that came up was that, um, you know, it would be a lot easier if things were automated, some, some, uh, to some level. And of course, we started entering the mobile tablet world where, you know, there was mass proliferation of smartphones. So we decided that, hey, why not use a tablet as a scoreboard that would tell you what's happening and also allow a lot of the features that are associated with digital technology. And by that I mean, now, since every ball is getting tracked on this, we can track people's batting averages, strike rates, all that stuff, right? Very deliberately, we decided to keep the electronics and the sensors hidden from view. Um, this for a couple of reasons. One is, it, it allows you to play the physical game completely. Um, there's no obstruction, there's no electronics uh, visible. The other thing is, from a maintenance point of view also, um, there's less things that can go wrong if things are inside. So, uh, we, won't, you know, we won't get into too much detail, but the sensors are all hidden around the field. Um, but like you can see, um, they detect, so we also detect the ball when it leaves the bowler. Based on that, we can figure out how long the ball has been in play. 
tell us a little bit more about the tablet, the interface that you've come up with, the app, uh, whether you know it's free, the platforms, and how does it work? Sure, sure. So uh, this uh, tablet is integrated with the game, right? And what you see is the scoreboard here. But um, if you go back to the main screen, mm. you can see how um, you can set up the teams here. Mm. And we've actually got a phone app as well. And through the phone app, one can mm. log in. Mm. Um, so we can do what's called an authenticated login. So mm. it really knows Aditya is the guy who's logged in. So um, the setup is very straightforward. Uh, it's always two teams, one playing against another team. Um, for, for the first uh, part, when you want to play a game, you just hit play. You select the number of outs, so the number of wickets on each team. And we select four in this case. The number of overs. If you play a two over game, it takes about five minutes to play the game. So let's say we select two. And now here's the login screen that I spoke about where you can log in with your phone. And here's the code that I talked to you about which allows our system to give a unique um, message. Um, also considering the buttons that we have on the side now it says uh, caught out on either side of me and it says umpire on, and the six on the other side of you. So can you explain why we have yeah. this? So the first thing was um, let's say I'm talking to a friend and, and, and you bowl a ball and I'm out bowled. What do I do about it? So we have something called umpire review which we can invoke and change the outcome of the last ball. So uh, for all those watching this at home, can you tell us uh, the price point of this and uh, where would they be able to spot one if they wanted to get hands on? So um, you know what we've done is we've got, we've done low volume production so far. We're just scaling up, trying to bring our costs down. Uh, right now the price point, we haven't settled on that yet because especially getting it into India, we have to figure out our shipping and, and uh, uh, duties and those kind of things. Uh, but right now we are targeting primarily the corporate market um, companies since we placed it successfully at Google and Cisco and Juniper and a number of other companies uh, we're trying to proliferate that in India as well. So I think the, the, the takeaway here is um, it's a physical game, it's a cool physical game and it gets people playing eye to eye which is um, very different from a console game as you know, right? That was one of the objectives. The other objective which sometimes gets lost in the foosball analogy is the fact that this is the hook. We record everything like I said earlier and so we have a uh, phone app as well that we are coming out with in which people can track their scores and see how their friends are doing and things like that. So we really want to integrate the hardware platform with the whole digital media and the social media effort. Well, you may actually not be able to get your hands on one of these anytime soon, but since I'm here, I'm going to keep playing on it. We'll take a quick break on Bite Me, but stay tuned. There's a lot more coming up on the other side of the show.